Hello, my name is Matthew Harrison. Uh, I'm a farming system scientist at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture and this video follows previous Apsim videos that I've started since 2018. In this uh, webinar I'm going to briefly show you an example of some of the outputs that you can get from Apsim Next Generation. Apsim Next Generation is the most recent version of Apsim. Uh, previous ver the previous version of Apsim was called Apsim Classic. So in particular I'm going to look at uh, the stresses that influence plant growth and in particular the difference between potentially nitrogen supply and demand and also water supply and demand. So in other words, why does a crop grow the way that it does? So why does biomass change the way that it does in response to multiple stresses? So it's essentially we're looking at why a crop grows in the way that it does and, and to do that we're going to have to look at the individual time course of a crop. So all I have open here uh, is the default example of potato. So to do that I've just gone to open an example on the home screen. I've double clicked on potato, I've opened that and then I've saved that example to my hard drive because you can't save in program files. So I've just opened that up in AppSim Next Generation. The default simulation is called Russet Burbank which I believe is a, an existing cultivar of uh, existing potato cultivar. So we have each of the components here, we have the weather file, the clock, the field, the soil components, the irrigation, the fertiliser applied and so on. Uh, now in this uh, webinar I want to specifically focus on these graphs and specifically the variables that come out of AppSim. So if we click on report, uh, and I've mentioned this briefly in previous simulations, if we we have a number of components here and if we want a variable related to that component we put that variable in square brackets. So for example if we want a variable out of the clock, if we want the daily time step out of the clock we have to put in clock in square brackets followed by this full stop followed by the name. So one way to see what variables exist is to type in the component name, so clock, then hit the full stop then up comes the list of variable names. So you can potentially choose any of those variable names. It's got a description here and you can double click on that variable for it to appear in the reporting variables. And once, it's, once it appears, those variables will then appear in the report once the simulation's been run and then we can plot them and look at them. So we've got variables including start date or start of day today and then we have other variables related to you know end of day, do weather and so on. So if we just click on today it, it uh, automatically populates it. So it, all of these are, it's essentially a, a um, subtree structure so if we, we have the main component so we have soil then uh, so if we look over here we have soil and then we have uh, as a subset of soil we have soil water so if we look over here in this component we have soil at this level we then have soil water as a child within the parent node which is what we're saying here then within soil water we want the variable drainage so each of these variables will come out some of them have specific variable uh, names so EO is uh, evaporation I believe a different form of evaporation and you can get those descriptions when you actually populate the individual variables so if we hit point uh, and we look for EO we can see that it's getting the potential evaporation from the soil surface whereas EOS gets the potential evaporation from the soil surface so that's the same but there would be a difference so in some cases we have replicated variables in AppSim and ES gets the actual variable actual soil water evaporation so EO is the potential evaporation and the actual evaporation will be will be slightly less because it's the actual variable so we just put in EO again there. So we run, we then, once we're happy with all the output variables, so we have variables from the clock, we have variables from the soil, we have variables from the plant module, which in this case comes from the potato module, which is here. And so you can relate them to the arbitrator, which determines the dry matter allocation and demand, also nitrogen supply and demand. Uh, or we could relate them to leaf components and these are the individual variables that the model is going to output here. This F of N relates to the nitrogen stress. FW relates to the water stress which are particularly important variables and I'll look at these shortly. Leaf air, in, leaf air index is LAI. Then we have photosynthesis, specific leaf area. We have phenological variables, 
root variables and so on. And each of these have been put into the default potato example in AppSim Next Generation. So if we right click and we run AppSim, uh, it's run and it says the, the simulation is complete. We can quickly check the summary log file that there's no warnings or errors and there is none. Uh, otherwise they'll appear here assuming you've got these boxes checked uh, and then we click on graphs and so if we click on this uh, head folder here with each of these graphs as a subcomponent we can see uh, each of the variables plotted under here which appears in the main folder so we can look in the first case it just comes up but if you click in there you can see what the legend means so it's it's very useful for interpreting why biomass accumulated accumulated in the way that it did or why leaf air index for example accumulated the way that it did so if we just look at this graph it's quite busy but uh, if you interpret the the legend it's quite easy to follow so we have total biomass which is this top curve here you can see it's a typical sigmoidal curve so we enter a, a linear phase and then it decreases towards the end of crop development we have below ground weight as that pink line we have tuber weight as that blue line and so on and so forth then you can look at the amount of nitrogen in the different components and obviously the total nitrogen is the most and then you can look at the nitrogen in the different components probably the most important uh, one of the most important things I'd like to point out is this stress factors graph now we can only plot these because we output the variables back in the report file so we have as I alluded to previously we have F of N which is the nitrogen stress and F of W which is the water stress so if we go back here to the graphs uh, and we scroll down we can see the stress factors now we have to click on it to get the legend to appear and similarly for any graph in here uh, now this orange line relates to the stress evolution over the course of the life cycle since sowing through to maturity and it's useful for interpreting what happens so this blue line indicates water stress so though in in the southern hemisphere this makes sense because we're without irrigation we're in the summertime so vapor pressure deficits increasing solar radiation is increased and obviously temperature is much higher so we're getting water stress over summer is essentially what that's saying and so that's essentially slowing growth so if that was one if all of these three factors were one the growth would be potentially unlimited by temperature by nitrogen by water stress or by vapor pressure deficit so the closer it is to one the less of the stress and so we can see in November and December this crop was stressed a little bit on some days due to temperature as we went over to January February we had more water stress and then we had this evolving stress of nitrogen over the course of the life cycle from, from about January that nitrogen stress sequentially become greater and that would have been restricting growth so if we try and relate those to physical variables so for example if we just look at water stress what it's saying here is that water supply water demand from the crop and the canopy and vapor pressure deficit exceeds the water supply from the root length from the soil type uh, and from the soil specific factors so if we go over here to water supply and demand we can actually look at those physical variables so we have this yellow line as potential uh, uh, evaporation potential transpiration the blue line is actual transpiration the green line is canopy demand so where canopy demand exceeds canopy supply is when we have this evolving water stress here we can do something similar with nitrogen supply and demand and I'm not sure whether I have nitrogen supply and demand here so we have stem night we have leaf nitrogen we have stem nitrogen percentage tuber nitrogen, root nitrogen, leaf appearance, dry matter allocation. So if we look at the dry matter allocation we have the dry matter demand from about the, uh, the end of December onwards exceeds the dry matter supply so that means the demand is greater than the supply so you're beginning a stress related to that and here we have the nitrogen graph that I was looking for before so the nitrogen supply from about mid-December onwards is less than the nitrogen demand you can see this nitrogen demand peaking is the amount of canopy area goes up so as this nitrogen supply exceeds the nitrogen demand your nitrogen stress will increase so if we go back if we go back up to the stress graph we can see that nitrogen stress is sequentially getting larger as that nitrogen supply as that nitrogen demand exceeds that nitrogen supply 
And so in that way, you can see what factors are actually restricting plant growth over the course of the life cycle. And I think that's one of the most useful things of biophysical models like APSIM. So we might want to go back and say, well, what is that potential growth limitation due to limiting nitrogen? So we could go back and say, right, I might apply fertiliser, uh, for example, at the, on the 1st of March to see if I can alleviate some of that nitrogen stress. So if we go back to the home, we go back to the management toolbox, and we're looking for a fertiliser application model such that we can apply fertiliser on the 1st of March. So we want to fertilise on a specific date. We copy that. We go back to the potato example. We paste that on the management tree, so we paste it within the field because you're managing within the field. And it has gone down to the bottom. So if you if you select an item, you hold down control and then you hold down the arrow, you can move that move the position on the simulation tree and it doesn't make any difference but I find that it's often easier if they're all grouped together. So what fertilizer do we want to apply? Well this is nitrate N. You can select different fertilizers here. I think I think nitrate N is okay in this case. We want to apply it as we said before on the 1st of March. We want to apply a large amount just to see if we get an get a response. Is the above amount to be replied each time? Well, no, it's not, because we only want to apply it once. So we then go back here, we rerun the simulation. It's completed. We just check the summary log, and that's fine. Now we go back to our graphs. So you can see there's a noticeable increase in the amount of crop biomass there. Now we want to specifically look at the nitrogen stress. So we come down here to the 1st of March where it's applied. Now you can see this line decreasing. So that And that's because we've applied a large dose of nitrogen. And so therefore the resulting crop growth has increased because this nitrogen stress has diminished. Of course it's the law of the limiting factors. So the most limiting stress will be limiting growth. Uh, and so... At this period, water is going to be more limiting, but in between this period here, nitrogen is the most limiting. But you can see that by applying nitrogen at that time will relieve stress. And so if you want to take out nitrogen completely, nitrogen stress, you could apply, you could go back to the management toolbox, apply nitrogen at which times the stress becomes greater than the threshold. And APSIM has various managers to do that. Similarly, you can do something similar for water. But... That's all I wanted to say in this presentation. I think it's very useful if you look at the individual components, the individual stress factors, and particularly the nitrogen and water supply and demand over the course of the life cycle to actually see why you're getting specific results and specific biomass accumulation for different crop types. Thank you.